the uh, first video on why FERGA ratings change the way they do from day to day stress that while there is no formula, the changes can be viewed as coming from three parts. Performance is what you more or less expect. Tide and focus are two things you're probably not thinking about. If you see a rating change that has you really dumbfounded, probably tide or focus or both are playing a role. We really focus on tide here, try to understand what it is. So here's how you might view the performance component. It's like you have a good night in league or a good tournament. It's like cranking this thing to the right and your rating goes up a little bit. Bad night in league or a bad tournament, it's like cranking this thing to the left. Your rating goes down a little bit. And that really does happen. But there are other reasons why your rating goes up and down. And it's like your jack is sitting on your own floating dock. So what you see when you're looking at a rating change is the height change that comes from the cranking right or left, but also the height change that comes from the raising or lowering of the floating dock. So even before understanding what the floating dock means or buying into it, you can see what a couple of consequences might be. You can imagine a rating that goes up an inch because it's you had a good night in league and you're cranked to the right, but the floating dock went down two inches, so what you see is a rating that went down an inch. You can also imagine that you didn't play league, so there's no cranking right or left, but the floating dock changed by a couple inches, so your rating changes by a couple inches. So we want to understand what the floating dock represents. It's tied and focused, put together. It's not raising and lowering everybody's rating. That would be a do-nothing change. It's raising and lowering your rating. So I'm going to focus on this thing that we call tied because it's a really important part of Fargo ratings that other rating systems, even ELO-based systems, don't have. It's these changes that we call tied that happen every day that keep Fargo ratings consistent everywhere. They keep ratings between men and women consistent, between amateurs and pros consistent, between different countries consistent, between small towns and big cities consistent. And after explaining it, I'm going to show you specific examples of adjustments between state that emerged from the CSI events in Las Vegas last month. Let's start by imagining that we have a group of players. It could be any kind of group of players. It could be all women pros, all Euro Tour players. It could be all players at Happy Valley Retirement Center. It could be all players in a small town. But let's imagine that this group of players plays a lot against one another and that we put them all on a cruise ship. You can place these players on the cruise ship according to how they play. Top of the cruise ship is the best players, weaker players on down. And any two adjacent decks have about the same relationship to one another, wherever they are. You can spot two games to seven to a player one deck below you, and four games to eight to a player two decks below you. So we can take a small town, a mid-sized city, and a major city, put them on three separate cruise ships. If you're the best player in the small town, you get to the top of the cruise ship. If you're an average player in that small town, you're several decks below. We can imagine women on one cruise ship and men on another, or Oregon, Arizona, and Florida cruise ships, and Asia, Europe, North America cruise ship. And we don't have to assign numbers to the decks, but we could, and we all know what the problem is. A deck 12 player in the mid mid-sized city is not going to equal the deck 12 player in the major city. Same with deck 6. We might find that the people winning tournaments in the mid-sized city Play even with the people one or two decks down in the major city. And the people on deck six of the mid-sized city might play even with the people on deck four of the major city. The important insight here is when you get information about how people from one group play compared to people from another group, you don't mess up the relationships of the decks within each cruise ship. They still work as a unit together. So it's like the cruise ships are in different harbors and a tie just needs to be raised or lowered to even up the two groups. And here's another thing. You might think you need, let's say, 10 people from the mid-sized city each playing 100 games against someone from the major city to see who they really play even with. But you don't. You could have 100 people from the mid-sized city each play 10 games. Or you could have 1,000 people from the mid-sized city each play a single game against a person from the major city. Same information in all of those. Players that have played the 16 million games that are in the Fargo Rate database tend to be clustered in groups that are not unlike these cruise ships. So let's say you're a player on this small town cruise ship here, and you've never played anybody other than others in the small town. You still will see your rating change, even if you don't play, as the tide in your harbor is adjusted. As an example, there are many female pros. Kelly Fisher is one who get all their games against other female pros. They stay on the ship. But that's okay, because there are plenty of players, largely on the female pros cruise ship, that play in 
events off the ship that lead to tide adjustments. A small fraction of these, there's Margarita Fefalava, Pia Filler, Jasmine Ocean, Christina to Catch, Jen Beretta, and they play in events like the Kremlin Cup, Derby City, Turning Stone, Diamond Las Vegas Open, and various Euro Tour events. We can use the recent BCAPL Vegas events as a vehicle to understand these tide changes. So if we take all of the matches that occurred in those events between two players with established Fargo ratings and sort them by where the players are from. So here's 20 out of the couple hundred or so matches where one of the players is from Colorado. You can see the opponents come from all over, but let's forget the opponents for a minute and just look at the Colorado players. You can see the individual Colorado players had ratings in the 600s and the 500s and some in the 400s. If we average all these ratings over all of the matches played by Colorado players at the event, properly weighted by the number of games in the match, we can say that Colorado players collectively play, played about 1,300 games, and they collectively have a rating of 581.4. So if we look at the matches, that's how we expect them to perform. So now we come over here and ignore who the first player is. We don't care about the Colorado players, what the rating is, or anything like that. We just look at who the opponent is and how many games were won. And we can ask the question, at what level was this 1,300 games played? Is it near 581.4? Some individual players are going to have a good tournament or a bad tournament, but when we average over all the players from a state, if they've played enough games, like 1,300 here, that's enough to get a general cancellation of those effects. And we should see a general agreement between the rating of a state and the performance of that state. If we don't, the optimization is going to adjust the tide of that state's cruise ship, as you'll see. So let's start by looking at Colorado, as long as three other states with a lot of games from the events, where things work out just fine. So for Colorado, the second one down, the orange bar is the 581.4, the rating of the Colorado players. The blue bar, 580 point something, is the performance of the Colorado players. Again, these are states where things work out just fine. The performance matches the rating actually quite well. Here are the seven states at the event that have 1,800 or more games played by established players against established opponents. And things generally work out pretty well. But check this out. It's the most notable thing here. The Ohio players had a rating of 561, and the 1,800 games were played at 574 speed. What are we to make of that 13-point difference? Or I should say, what is the optimization to make of that 13-point difference? We don't make any judgments at all. So let's look at two extremes. Like First, let's imagine that Ohio is a, a cruise ship that has never had anybody play off the cruise ship and that these are the only games that has connected Ohio to the rest of the world. If that was the case, the cruise ship, the tide, would change by 13 points. Everybody in Ohio who hasn't played, who didn't come to Vegas, would go up by 13 points. Well, that didn't happen. The other extreme is that these 1,800 games are but a small fraction of the off-the-cruise ship games that Ohio players have played. Maybe they've played hundreds of thousands of other games against people from outside of Ohio. If that was the case, this would just be viewed as a statistical swing. Ohio players got lucky. So we want to look at rating changes for players in Ohio who didn't play at all. That's the tide shift. Did they go up 12 points? Did they go up 3 points? Did they go up a tenth of a point? Did they not go up at all? How did the optimization treat this? What information does the optimization think it got from these players' performance? And we'll look at a few others as well. Alaska, for instance, played about 1,200 games and underperformed by about 14 points. New South Wales, that's uh, Sydney, Australia area, played about 1,300 games and overperformed by about 20 points. So here's Ohio. What you're looking at going across here is the over 1,000 players with established Fargo ratings in Ohio who did not play in Vegas, who did not play at all. They didn't play any games. Remember, the Ohio players in Vegas outperformed their expectation by about 12 points. This is what happened to everybody else. They didn't go up by 12 points, but they did generally go up by about a point and a half. These people here, whose rating went up the most by a couple of points, these are people whose record is most closely connected to the couple of people who we now realize play a little bit better than, than we thought they did, who did well in, in Vegas. 
players over here who are largely unaffected are players who don't really live on the Ohio cruise ship. They're players like Billy Thorpe, Alex Olinger, Kelly Isaac, players who have much more diversified portfolios. All these states here have at least a thousand players with established Fargo rating. And you can see Ohio had the biggest tide adjustment, a little over a point increase. Uh, Massachusetts had a couple tenths of a point increase, Wisconsin went down a half a point, and so forth. A player may not see a fraction of a point change, depending upon whether it bumps them to the next point or not. And here's some others. Uh, recall that Australia outperformed expectation by about 20 points, and you can see that uh, pretty much all the established players in Australia and New South Wales went up by just under seven points. And this effect uh, actually went over to New Zealand as well. So that entirely entire continent uh, was raised. When these Vegas events happen, there's a lot of people playing off their cruise ship. But remember, uh, the optimization happens every day. And these tie shifts are normally happening a little at a time. There's a lot of people playing off their cruise ship a little bit here and a little bit there. So a lot of times, rating changes that you see after you play might seem to make sense. Sometimes they won't.